Cislo Spice, digital recipes for dominance. Cislo Cislo Spice. Recipes for digital dominance. Hello everybody, we're gonna dive right in. All right, here's what's going on. So we got a little bit of Cislo Spice coming at you. We're gonna do free weekly trainings on everything relating to marketing, digital media, video production, video editing, website design, graphic design, social media design, how to generate more leads, growing a digital brand, brand transformation, brand strategy. They're all gonna be free live trainings that you're gonna get an accessible link to. We're gonna do it every Wednesday at 7 p.m. My goal is to really educate you, give you some spice, throw some heat on it, build it all together so that you have everything you need for free to check out and improve your brand, your marketing efforts on social media right now, especially right now with everything that's required to bring your brand, your business, whatever it may be, into the digital era. So I hope to see you there. Sign up, let's get you on. I look forward to seeing you there. Cislo Spice, recipes for digital dominance. I'll see you there. Hey everybody, how you doing? Happy Wednesday. Happy Wednesday, February 2nd, 2022, 2022. I don't know if you caught that. I did. 0202 2022. It's a lot of twos today. That's what's going on. Hopefully you can hear me okay. I think I'm coming through pretty clear, so there shouldn't be an issue with that. Let me just check on my side. Yep, that looks like it's coming through. So good. Well, hey guys, sorry about last week. I had uh, I had an emergency I had to go handle, um, but we're back this week, so we're going to dive in and cover the topic that I wanted to discuss uh, last week, which was how to balance creativity and marketing. And really why I wanted to talk about this is because one, I don't see anybody talking about it. <clears throat> Two, I was talking to a good friend of mine and we, we kind of had a discussion about it. And so it just got me interested in, in really dissecting this and really looking at it from the guy who has so you know, if you can blend those two sides, like sales, creativity, marketing, all of that kind of grown together is really an interesting viewpoint. And, you know, before we dive in today, you know, I'll tell you a little story about myself. I remember when I started, um, I, I started sales. And I think the big fear that I had, which is interesting as a creative person, the big fear that I had was that I was going to lose the creative ability that I had. You know, I thought I was going to be like, oh man, I can't, I'm not going to be able to create the content the way I want to create. Like I legitimately had a fear of losing that ability and um, it kind of prevented me from doing the sales side of things, but I was already kind of doing it with the content. But anyway, so long story short, what I discovered was being able to understand a sales cycle and how that cycle should go the parts of that sales cycle, all those different pieces actually helped me become a better creative in a sense, because now I, I understood that I could communicate to two different sides. Okay. There's the creative aspect, but then there's also the sales aspect. And then there's also creating the desire, uh, the need, the want, all those things that are connected with, you know, marketing and creativity. So today I'm going to take you through a little bit of a ride of talking about, you know, what is creativity? Where's that come from? Then jump over to the marketing side and then how you can actually, is there a balance? Can you balance it? Is it something that's doable or not? Because, you know, it is, it is totally doable in my opinion. You know, if you're too far creative, then you need to adjust your skills to get a little more knowledge on the marketing side, which is why you guys are here today. Uh, if you're a super marketer, you know, but you got to, you don't really, you know, have that creative aspect of things from the content creation side, well, maybe you should drive over on that side. And then there's a third piece to that, which I didn't really include in here, but as we started talking, it's that general, I wouldn't even say general, but more advanced sales knowledge, because that's really going to be a deciding factor for you when you create content and when you do your creative for marketing and advertising and all those different things. So we'll dive into that today and hopefully you'll learn a few things that uh, maybe you haven't thought about. Uh, this is certainly stuff that I've picked up since uh, 2010, uh, which is what, 12 years now. So there's a lot of things that have shifted in both my perception of marketing, my perception of creativity and all of that stuff. And so I'll share that with you today. <clears throat> now, I'm gonna start with a story first 
which is last in middle of December. So I did a documentary series, docu-series that we're still finalizing to get onto Netflix and Amazon right now through Paramount. And I actually had a call with the vice president of that studio, a friend of mine introduced. And it was one of those calls that was a life-changing calls. Now I only mentioned it briefly, but I never got into the actual discussion of what happened. And so I think the first thing that shocked me was that this person went through, this is a business executive, by the way, and, and he watched all the content and he had a bunch of notes. That call was about two hours long. And he gave me all this critique, feedback and all this stuff. But the thing that <clears throat> was really interesting is that, you know, I fell into the whole creative side. Like I, I, I still had a little bit of the salesy side, but he came at it from the viewpoint of, okay, well, well what's the pitch going to be here? And, you know, we need a little bit more aggression. And he just gave me this feedback and it really got me thinking about, you know, the ads that we do, right? And usually I'm very advertising based where it's just like sell, 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 sell. But in this scenario, it was a little more of like, how do you weave a story but sell at the same time and actually get this thing out? So I took all these notes and I worked and he said, okay, priority one, let's just get a sizzle reel together. And for those of you that don't know what a sizzle reel is, it's just like a, it's a highlight reel of everything you shot very short, two to three minutes long to give somebody a flavor, a taste of what it is that's going to happen. Right. And so when I built that, I built it off of what I saw on Netflix. Like if you go on Netflix and you hold on a video, it plays a sizzle reel. Sometimes it plays a piece of the show. Other times it plays the sizzle reel. It's a trailer basically is all it is. Anyway. So the, so the short answer of this was that I was, I was looking at it from the perspective of a creative, but I missed the piece about the sales pitch part, you know, and it really got me thinking from a marketing perspective, how that worked. So here's a really big business, you know, tycoon executive, you know, responsible for some of the largest shows that we've watched in the past, not going to name them, but you know, they're pretty large and, 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 are, and you're, you know, them. and he's telling me all these different things. And I'm sitting to myself, I'm like, man, I, I just totally blanked on the marketing side. You know, I just went so hard into the story. I went so hard into the creative, but I kind of missed the marketing angle of it. And so that really got me thinking about everything that I was doing. And, and really the primary thing that I realized was that there wasn't that balance. Okay. And this is where a lot of content creators, brands, you know, luxury brands, or even guys that are artists, they miss that point. You know, they go so hard into the creative side of things. This looks cool. This is amazing. Da, 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 da. But they miss this other piece, which is, is it marketable? Marketable. Is that a word? Marketable? Can you market it? Whatever. Can you market it? Like, can you actually sell it? And um, that's where that sales hat comes into play. Okay. So from a sales perspective, you know, when I get on a call with someone, you know, I'm always sitting there and I'm thinking to myself, okay, obviously I want the deal to close. Obviously we need to get the credit card for that to happen. But in order to get to that ending point, there's a whole thing that has to take place prior to. And really for me, because I've talked to, I mean, I'm doing, because of all the calls I've done in my career so far, I can estimate and predict where things are going to go, but it wasn't always like that. And so when I approach a piece of content for a brand or creativity or any creative piece that's going to go out there, I usually run it through my own little mini sales process, right? Like I try to incorporate the greeting, the fact finding, the objection handling, and then the proposition all within a graphic, all within a specific piece of content, right? And so when I'm looking at that, you know, because that's what you do with the sales process, right? I don't talk too much during the sales process. I talk at the end, but it's really being able to listen more. Whereas marketing is the op, it's an inverted version of that. Whereas you're trying to extract information from somebody from the sales side, the marketing aspect is I'm giving you the information so that I may hit a point that would generate your interest. And how do you do that? Creativity. So primarily, if you've never done sales, study sales, if you're not making calls every day, I recommend you do that because it's going to help you understand what some of the concepts that we're going to go through today, because without that piece, without that knowledge of a sales process in that whole deal and what goes into that, why people say yes, you know, why people want to talk to you at all, why they're interested in the first place, that's going to really affect the creative ability you have to market a product and service. Okay. So with that being said, let's dive in and talk about what's creativity and where's that come from. So creativity, you know, you think colors, you think art, you think this, you think that that's not necessarily what creativity is. That's the outcome of creativity. Creativity is the ability for you 
to you know foresee a message uh, foresee something predict something state something observe something that nobody else can see that doesn't exist yet right that's what creativity does the how you do that is up to you whether that's a graphic or art uh, communication phone calls a video whatever but your ability to foresee okay i have this idea i've heard all these different things that came up but I need to see how that's actually going to exist. So I'm being creative. I'm creatively imagining what this is going to be. And then I'm going to think of strategic ways to actually play on that. So if I have idea A, I need to think to myself, okay, what are the strategic ways that I could get this out for people to understand what it is that I'm even talking about? Okay. There's an idea where you can be revolutionary. You can be innovative. I don't know what those words mean. Everybody just uses them because they all, you know, innovative is like, you know, it, anyway, we'll, we'll, I'll do that another time about language and terminology and marketing. But there's a term, there's a point where you can innovate too much. There's a point where you can be ambitious too much and miss the mark. Like it goes way over everybody's head. And this is where your creative strategy and your creative ability comes into place. So for me, what I do is I'm looking at how can I get out in front with this idea that may not exist or does exist or I need to improve on it, but I can't make it so abstract that people can't understand it. Like I saw somebody post an article today or something like that. It said like something like normalizing the strategic methods of communication for the corporate fortune 5,000 workplace. And I was just like, I, that sounds great, but what, I don't know what that means. Like, couldn't you say how to talk better in high-end companies? Like, why, why has it got to be so complicated? And so a lot of people fall into that. They're like, oh, if I sound more advanced, I'm being creative in that and people are going to respect me more. And that's actually not true. It actually comes off the opposite. It come, and I found this out <clears throat> through a lot of the clients that we've marketed is that it comes off just in the wrong way. So it's not really creative. You think it's creative, but it's just too high, right? So for me, I'm trying to take an idea and a concept and relate it to something that is something that somebody could experience in their day-to-day -day that isn't too far outside the norm. Then my job is to creatively introduce through content and messaging uh, the, the advanced portions of what that idea is, okay? So I start... Very simply, from a creative strategy, the lowest of low, okay? And what do I mean by that? <clears throat> I'm starting off from what is the simplistic form of this, right? If the idea is so complex, which ideas shouldn't be complex, but if this is really an advanced thing, what is the simplest version of that thing and how relatable is that to my audience, okay? And, and can they understand it immediately if I explain it to them? If they can't, and I have to continue to explain, I'm really not doing the job of what it is that I wanted to accomplish with this, right? So the simplest form of an idea is the first place to creatively start, okay? Relatable imagery, relatable messages, simple messages, easy messages, things that just kind of make sense. And that becomes your platform for the basis of marketing, okay? You've got this bucket of, okay, if we were to break this up into tiers, we have our low rung, our next level, next level, maybe five, six levels high six being the most advanced, right? So, but I can't start my marketing and my creative at level six. It's just not going to happen. And this is what the cryptocurrency and the NFT people get wrong. They're up here at six. They re I don't even think they understand what they're talking about, to be honest with you, because I've asked a few people, like, what is it? And I don't get any answers that I think make sense. So, and that's the problem with that whole space is really it's too far away from the majority of what people are working with, right? It sounds great. It sounds wonderful. It's just that distance, that gap from the lowest of low to the high advanced level six or whatever we're talking about, it's like thousands of miles away. And so if you're trying to attract investors on that level, simplify it, okay? Well, it's just that nobody cares. Right. You want to get down to the granular. Now, I'm not I, I don't do anything with crypto. I don't do anything with NFTs. I'm just saying if I was going to market it, that's the first thing that I would do because it's just too high. Um, IRAs are another one. 401ks are another one. 1031 exchange, like all these things about real estate gets really technical. Right. 
So if you're trying to attract investors, the more advanced you are, the, the worse off you're at. And when I talk on stage, this is what I talk about from a creative standpoint, I'm thinking about the guys that have money that, but haven't been accessed yet. Okay, we all know you, you can access the guys that have money and pretty savvy, but there's a lot of people that have come into money that are eager to invest, that are eager to learn. I'm using this as an example that no one's creatively communicating to yet. I had a great conversation. We brought on a new client. Um, it was a network marketer and, you know, <clears throat> she's, she's spearheading the front end of the baby boomer generation which is interesting because everybody talks down about the baby boomer generation, but honestly, they're all on social media. They're there because their kids and their family told them to be there. So they're there, but nobody's talking to them. So there's an opportunity right there, like, like creative strategic thinking, a perfect exemplification of that. Oh, well, there's a whole market that nobody communicates to because everybody's trying to do the Look at me, I travel. Look at me, I go to the bars. Look at me, I've, I lay on top of rented cars and I've got to fit this, fit that. But there's a whole demographic that actually has money that might be interested in communicating to you, right? So how do you relate to that group? This is the whole point. What's the balance between your marketing and the creative side on the other side of the and the sales side of that? Those three pieces, that triangle, they all work together. Now, marketing is probably senior to all of that because sales and creative, well, I'm sorry, creativity is senior to all of that. Marketing is next, sales is last, okay? Because no, sales just don't happen without the other two, right? So if I'm trying to attack an industry or I'm trying to communicate to a market that nobody is really talking to, like the baby boomers, everybody's out there making fun of them, you be the guy that goes and talk to them. And that's what this girl's doing. And we're, we're excited to help market for her because it's an untapped space. And I have the stats, I have the data, I have the information, they're all there, right? But there's an opportunity there that nobody's taking advantage of. So that's creative, okay? The ability to see something, perceive what isn't there, and then think of, okay, how could I talk to that group? How could I relay information that can go out um, that hasn't gone out before? And so that becomes this balance that exists between sales, marketing, and creativity, right? And that, that fundamental crux of all of that is you know understanding how a sales cycle actually works now on the internet the sales cycle is very different it can be very fast it could also be a little bit drawn out you know people complain about internet leads and things like this and honestly like i've gotten great deals from internet leads it just takes a lot of consistent follow-up and so that's 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 really where it becomes interesting from you know a marketing and creative standpoint is Okay, how many different ways am I penetrating this audience? Which leads me into this, the, probably the heart of what I wanted to talk about today. And it's called the tapping effect. And I'm just gonna, you know, you have a pen tapping. Now, there's a movie out, came out maybe five, six years ago. It's called Mark Felt. And I found it maybe last year. And it's about the guy who was, he wasn't the head of the FBI, but he was like a senior director of the FBI. He was, he was deep throat. In the Watergate scandal. Now that movie's great. Watch it. The, I'm not. This has no parallel to the movie. It has parallel to one thing. So the guy Mark is thinking about releasing the documents and stuff that he found to the press, and he goes and he meets this reporter. Throughout the whole movie, the guy's always tapping a pen, and and like you know Ridley Scott, who directed it, really makes an effort to show you that he's tapping his pen on something all the time. In conversation, he's just tapping you know when he's on the phone listening to people talk he's just tapping now you think he's thinking but there's something else going on here and so he sits down and he has this conversation with the reporter and he says you guys probably might have heard this but he says you know you could take a metal rod and you could go to the foundation of a building and you could tap on the foundation of that building and if you tap on it enough times rhythmically that creates this kind of vibrational thing that reverberates to the whole building and the building literally comes down from inside of itself, right? And I thought about that and I said, wow, that's advertising, that's marketing, that's branding, that's creativity, that's sales, okay? So for me, what I'm looking at is not just the creative strategy of how we're gonna execute a message, of how we're gonna execute something out into the marketplace, but I'm also interested in from the viewpoint of how many times do I have to tap into that space 
to get somebody to finally say, I want to talk. Okay. How many taps is that going to take? You know, sales could take 20, 30 taps, seven taps. Tap, I don't know. Could take a lot of different taps, but marketing takes a lot of different hits over and over and over again before somebody says, okay, I'm ready. I want to talk to you. I, I see all your stuff all over the place. I love what you're doing. I'm interested. Help me. I want to learn more, you know, whatever that is. Right. So, so the part of the tapping that, that happens is the ability for you to creatively blanket an audience. Okay. So I'll tell you what I do every day, aside from all the promotion and everything, you know, I make sales calls. I probably do about 200 a day right now. And every single person that I call, and some of you guys that are on here may have gotten a call for me. Um, I send an email, I send a text message and I send, and I, and I leave a voicemail all at once, right? I'm blanketing and doing a lightning strike right on the person that I'm trying to get them to communicate with, right? I want to talk to them. So it's a blanketing approach. I also do this on social media. It's the same thing. I take a post, one post. I don't create 12 different posts for different platforms. I make one post creatively about what it is that I'm going to think about. And I drop that across the platforms. Now people will turn around and they'll say, well, don't you need to be super creative and create a bunch of content across different platforms? You could if you wanted to, but you don't have to. See, if you post... And if you create and if you market and if you sell aggressively and you know you're going to post every day, then you don't need to create multiple stuff for different platforms because through your rotation of the information that you want to share, the tapping, you will hit all of those different points over time. And it keeps it just kind of, it keeps that repetitive tapping. You want to be able to duplicate from a creative standpoint. You want to be able to duplicate the activity and make it magnified through repetition. Okay. I'll say it again. You want to duplicate the action so that it become magnified through repetition. Now you can't do that. If you're wanting to create a thousand pieces of content for different platforms, if you have a team to do it, awesome, but you don't need to. Why? Because we're looking at this rhythmic repetitive, cadence that just happens over and over and over and over and over again, right? Might even be a little annoying, but that's okay. We're not, we're not being annoying here, but that's what I'm trying to describe to you. So that creative side is we've done the build out. We've done the creative viewpoint of everything, but then we also turned around and said to ourselves, Hey, you know what? We got to repeat this message. We got to repeat this message. We got to market this message. We got to market this piece of content. Maybe they didn't see it the first time. Maybe they didn't see it the fifth time. Maybe they didn't see it the 12th time. I don't know. But the point of the matter that I'm talking about here is that blanketing an audience generates more potential leads, generates more responsiveness, generates more communication from that activity than trying to create thousands of pieces of content over the other side of the coin, right? Because I understand that all I have to do is keep repeating a message until somebody says something. Right. It's like when you watch those disaster movies and it's just a repeating message on loop. Eventually somebody hears it. You know what I mean? It's the same thing, you know, treat it like a disaster. Like, oh my God, I got to keep repeating it. So somebody finds me and they get rescued. So that balance between creativity and marketing is really a simple one. Okay. You get creative on what you're going to say, how you're going to relate it, how you're going to expel it out into the marketplace. And then you have the repetition, which is the marketing side of that. How many different ways am I going to tap this? How many different ways am I going to retarget my campaigns with one, two, three, four, five message and really drive that deep? I'll give you another scenario. When I was in sales, when I was doing sales at the beginning of my career, uh, my head guy um, who I would go to if I felt like I, I ran into a rut and I would go to him and I would just say, hey, look, and I'm running into this situation. And he said, let me ask you a question. He says, is it better to do 500 calls a day to cold people that I've never heard from you before? Or is it better to go deep on a list that already is somewhat interested and repetitively hit that list? And I said, well, I think it's better to go deep on the list. And he said, yeah, it is. Because you're increasing the repetition. You're increasing the communication. You can get creative on how you talk to them. You know, you run a few messages a few times, you send a few emails a few times, you change it up again, you change it up again, you change it up again. But really what you're interested in from the creative and marketing standpoint is 
we're going deep on that list. We're going far into that list so that there's some point of stability that for you, you know that you're hitting these people. You know that there's a communication that's going out. You know that eventually they're going to see it. And they always do. Maybe today, maybe two weeks from now. It may be six months from now. It may be a year. I mean, it could be four years. Who knows, right? But what I'm talking about here is that tapping repetitively on a list that you've created, nurturing that list, continuously being in communication with them creates that dynamic of effective marketing, which is what we're talking about, right? Now, when is it time to, to change up your creative? When should you say, okay, all right, we're using the same thing. It isn't working. Uh, we, we keep saying the same thing, but we're not changing it up. We don't have anything new coming into the fray. When is it time for you to turn around and say to yourself, well, you know what? This is, this is the time. When do you do that? So I'll tell you when I do it. A couple, couple ways that I determine when it's time to change. First of all, I'm always creating content, but I'm also reusing a lot of content. So I create a bunch and then I kind of use it for like a week or so. And then I'll go back and create new content. And then I'll go back three or four weeks, grab that content, bring it forward. It's kind of like this shuffle game that I play. When I feel like I've exhausted, you kind of have a personal feeling where you're like, okay, I think I've exhausted this communication. I think it's time to change the communication. When you're not really getting the activity, when you're not really getting the, um, the interest level, when you're not really getting that, okay, we're really seeing you know, responses, that's usually an indication to change. Uh, from an advertising standpoint, uh, when that lead flow kind of drops off, all of a sudden, it's time to change. Uh, when you've been holding steady at a consistent cost per lead, for three weeks and then all of a sudden two for two weeks in a row it shoots up double the cost of the lead time to change you know what i mean so so that's what i'm always doing i'm like okay I, there's a general just feeling that i have that i determine or say to myself okay now is the time that i need to, to adjust this or secondly it's statistically driven where i see the costs increasing and the lead flow dropping uh, third is when, you know, the engagement kind of starts to drop off on the content that I distribute, the content that I post. When that starts to fall, when that starts to fall away, I'm like, okay, I think it's time to consider changing this up a little bit and really making something, um, something different that, that doesn't exist right now. And so when you do decide to change it, okay, again, I'm going back to what we talked about at the beginning. All we're trying to do is to imagine, see and communicate things that don't exist. Okay. That's all I'm looking for. I'm like, does that exist? No, good. Nobody else thought of it. No, good. Okay. Now, how am I going to get it out there? All you got to ask yourself is, is this a level six or is this like lowest of low? If it's the lowest of low, go with it. Then you can graduate up throughout the deal. So whatever industry that might be, real estate, investing, insurance, automotive, beauty, fashion, whatever. Just think about it from that perspective. Think about it from that breakdown. Think about it from that, from that world of, okay, where is this going to fall? Is somebody going to be receptive to it, right? And then go back in and tap it again. Tap the building. Make the building crumble. When the building crumbles, they respond. They need the help. They want to pay attention to it. And if you go back to the very, very first Cisco Spice that I did, I showed you that diagram where it's like this guy's, this girl's, they got all this stuff going on in their universe, how do you actually get through to them? And that's that repetitive tapping communication, right? Because now what we've done is we've created it. Now we're doing a showcase of that creativity and we're going to keep forcing that out until somebody says, okay, I'm ready and I'm interested, right? Now today, you don't have to spend a lot of money to do that. We've got clients that their ad spends $500 a month and they're averaging anywhere from 10 to 12 leads a week, right? Or they're spending $12.50 a month and they're getting... 28 to 50 leads a week, right? And then we got guys that are spending north of 30 grand a month and they're getting, well, I, I, you can kind of imagine, but that's more for e-commerce stuff. But when you understand this that I'm talking about, it makes, it makes that cost go down quite significantly because you under, you're, 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 taking to the, you're taking to these platforms with a little bit more strategy than just like, okay, I set it up, I think it's going to work. No, 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 no. You've, you've kind of innovated a little bit you didn't go too high over people's heads. 
And then you put the money behind it to actually distribute that creativity. And the strategy is we're going to run for three weeks like this at the low level. Then we're going to retarget those people at another level, retarget them again. And, and just people cycle through that funnel as they go along. It's like an invisible funnel that doesn't exist. And you're building it and building it and building it and building it. And then you, now you've got this nice balance. Okay. People come in. Oh, I'm introduced to you. Cool. And then over time, they're like, wow, this guy does some advanced stuff, you know, and you build it up over time. And that's really where your marketing efforts start to take on the form that you dream marketing should be. Where you're like, man, this thing is really pumping. This thing is working. This thing is driving. This thing's growing. This thing's doing exactly what it needs to do. And if you can pull that all together and really make it make sense, man, this is what we're talking about. And that's what we've been talking about this whole time today is because we're tapping the persistent tapping, right? We're imagining what's there. We're bringing it in. We're pulling it all together. We're going to distribute it out. So we have this blend of the creativity side, the marketing side, and the sales side. Okay. Another reason, another reason why I change up my creative is if I feel like the sales communication is no longer relevant to the moment. That's a tricky one to kind of discern because for my industry, it doesn't really change too much. Everybody kind of wants the same. But in your industry, it could change. So you have to be cognizant of that and just say, okay, good. Has anything happened recently of which we could adjust this communication? And, and, and does our pitch, does our, does our message, does our creative message actually fall in line with what's happening right now? Okay, so there's that conscious effort of being observant of what's actually happening uh, within the industry, within the marketplace at the moment. We ran, um, we're running ads for a travel company right now. And, um, you know, it was really cool. They were spending a significant amount of money on Google ads and YouTube ads. And uh, we came in, we set the budget a month ago and we let it run for the month. And we were able to get them the same amount of leads for half the amount of money that they were spending. So now we're going to let that run for another month. And then we'll readjust if it if we need to because if we max we haven't even maxed out the budget yet. So if we max out the budget and we can double the amount of leads, then we can pivot and say, good. If we double the spend, this is where we're going to go because we've run this consistently over ninety days. And that's how my agency does it. Like we don't. I'll never ask somebody for twenty grand up front to do marketing immediately. We look at it. And we say, all right, good. Okay, let's run it on a smaller budget. Let's prove the concept and then let's scale it out from there. Right. I mean, you need 500 bucks for us to work together. That's it. If you got $500 in ad spend, we have a management cost associated with that. But if you have $500 in ad spend, we can help you. Right. And I, that's not a lot of money. That's like $13 a day. That's two. That's an Uber Eats breakfast or a Starbucks coffee from Uber Eats delivered to you every day. Right. So that's how you have to look at it. But for us. So, so what happened there? What was the creative strategy? Well, I'll tell you what happened. We went in and we saw that there was a lot of campaigns that were just miscellaneous. They weren't dialed down. There was no sales process. There was no sales to think with that. It was just buy now, do this, do that. We, we reorchestrated all of the advertising so that it could be more effective from that one standpoint of what's the sales process that this company goes through? What's the standard sales process that happens within the travel industry? And how are we adapting their creativeness? Because they have a beautiful brand. I mean, the brand is gorgeous, right? We came in, we added in some more flair to it. But the brand is really lovely. Like it's, it's got a lot of attraction to it. You know, it's travel. It's exciting. It's interesting. It's, it's unique. It's, it's fun. And that's the idea. So, so for us, it was just a matter of tweaking that and bringing that together. Let me see something. Dan asked the question. How do you track the campaigns to such detail? Is it the info provided via Facebook's dashboard? Mm. Sorry, I need a sip of coffee. That's a good question. So it's a little bit of both, right? So yeah, we go into the dashboard on Facebook and we track all that information. We also have all the pixels and codes and things installed and trackers and heat maps on the actual websites that we are marketing to. Uh, and we, we analyze all that data at once, right? And we go from there. Google gives us a little bit more. So you have a lot more tailor-made uh, demographic information. I mean, we got a lead that came in from one of our clients and we presented the report to them and the lead said nine and a half. And uh, the guy's like, how do you do nine and a half leads? I was like, well, somebody halfway filled out a form and they didn't click submit. I mean, that's the detail that we can go to. And that's the kind of guy 
that we can go track. So yeah, we have it on the dashboard back end of Facebook. We have it on the actual websites themselves with the analytic trackers that we have on websites that we're marketing to. I mean, we're pulling analytics from a lot of different sources. And then we combine all that information at the end of the week to really say what's working and what's not, and then taking it from there. So hope that answered your question, right? So coming back to what I was discussing, you know, we're, we're, we're building that brand up because it was really lovely. It was interesting. And so that's all we really did. And then we, we, we turned off the campaigns that were not performing. See people, people in advertising, believe so much in the creative that they will throw their money at the creative and believe that it's always going to work. But in advertising, numbers don't lie. They just don't. Okay. And when I, what do I mean by that? Before somebody goes, well, Robert, I mean, it's ROI, ROAS, ROAS, return on ad spend. Sounds like, I'm like, dude, we got that. But, but all I'm talking about is I'm looking at the numbers that happen on the day-to-day -day basis. You're worried about your return on ad spend you're worried about that, but nobody's, you, you haven't taken the time to correct the message. We spent all this money. Great. Be prepared to spend more. Okay. You're going to have to spend money. There is no silver bullet. And I think a lot of people look for the silver bullet in advertising and marketing. And what I'm talking to you about here is as close to a silver bullet as you're going to get. And this is from years of doing this and, and having made the mistakes and haven't spent a lot of money and haven't not convert. Google and YouTube are probably my favorite platforms to advertise on. You get a little bit more of a qualified result, a little more expensive, uh, a lot more control, but it's good. Facebook's also great if you're going for a volume play. I mean, you know, you can, it was amazing. We turned on, um, what did we do? We turned on this one campaign. I think the guy spent $180 in three days and he got 10 leads or uh, nine leads out of that. So his average cost per lead was like $15, $16. And the product he's selling is $5,000. He sells one of them. I mean, he's paid for basically everything. You know, see, but you've got to look at it like that too. You know, I closed the lead the other day from my lead list that was worth about $10,000. And I was like, okay, what did it cost to acquire this one lead? Okay, it cost me $12. Well, it really didn't cost me 12. It probably cost me for that month probably cost me about seven to eight grand, but I made all that back in one deal and then some, so I profited, right? But there's more deals coming in. It's the beginning of the month, right? So that's how I view it, you know? And that's, not, that, that's that balance thing too. Like I don't get sucked into the numbers. I look at the numbers, I analyze the numbers, I play with the numbers, we tweak based on the numbers, but I don't let the numbers dictate success or failure for me because it's just an additional avenue to the sales process that I'm actually running on. So my creative strategy is like I said, when, some, when a lead comes through, they get an email, they get a text, they get a phone call and a voicemail. And I'll call them again, maybe two or three days later, same thing, email, text, uh, phone call, voicemail. And some of you that are on here, you might've gotten that from me. You know, All I'm doing is just, I'm here, I'm here. Repetitive tapping, I'm here. And the same thing, anybody that comes into those forums sees my ads, we go through the process again, and we retarget those people creatively, strategically, we change up the message, we escalate the message, we increase the message, we build the message higher, and then eventually somebody comes through that we can actually sell a product and service to, right? But that's what I'm looking at. Sales, you know, creativity, marketing, right? Market, if you were going to do it correctly, it's marketing, creativity, sales, that's how it goes, right? So our, our, our deal is to really build that, build that, that up and our mindsets from a brand, okay? Because the brand is going to exist. The brand is going to evolve over time. Your leads are going to change. The platform is going to change a little bit. Your primary message is going to change a little bit, again, depending on the industry that you're in. But as long as you just go back to the staples of the creativity matches the marketing, which comes from that sales knowledge, like really understand sales, really take the time, make the phone calls, make the mistakes, do all that stuff. Because when you go to run your advertising campaigns, you're going to get really creative on that, right? This is something that I did many years ago. And I talk about this, like I just started using everybody's objections as advertisements, I took every single, I wrote every single objection down. I've talked about this a thousand times. Every single objection that I've ever gotten about advertising, marketing, distribution, 
I use it as an ad. I was talking to, uh, we hired this company to help us um, bring in more leads and things like that, right? And they're asking me, is there any niche thing that you could do to actually, you know, make this offer more attractive? And I just explained, uh, what I said was, look, a market, marketing agency is a marketing agency. Creativity is the creativity, okay? How we produce is how we produce, right? I will tell you what people tell me and why they work with me. Number one, they hired a company that was supposedly big and built all these big people that you know about that are successful entrepreneurs and they didn't do anything with them and they forgot them or they said something to them that made them feel invalidated. That's one reason why people come with us. The second reason, horrible experiences with other ad agencies, lack of reporting, lack of activity, lack of deliverables, lack of actually getting things done, um, no communication, no reports. That's the second thing. Number three, too expensive. We spent way too much money and lost money. I love those. Those are my favorite. I'm like, good. We get start with $750. We'll show you what we can do. Okay. And then we scale it out from there. This way here, you don't have to hurt yourself. We go month to month and we do 90 days, whatever you want to do. Month to month, my cost is a little more expensive. You go 90 days, you prepay, a little less expensive, more money for ad. You tell me what you want to do. Okay. You don't want a commitment. No problem. Six months, even cheaper in the long term, how you want to build it out, right? That's me being creative. Sales is creative, okay? There was a situation, I was working with somebody once and um, this is why I love sales. A number was pitched to the potential prospect. They came back, didn't counter offer, but asked for pricing for a piece of the offer that was given to them. Problem is, is that the original offer was priced in such a way to be strategic, creatively strategic, to attract them to purchase that package, which was awesome. And it works. But in this scenario, the deal got weird. Okay. And I asked the guy and I said, okay, we said this or asking for this. How would we actually price that? Like, what would you do? No answer. And I just said, dude, like, this is, this is, this is what separates a good salesperson from, and a good marketer from anybody else. Because I immediately go into, okay, how can I play with these numbers and get creative to make this make sense? But also, I still want them to buy this package. But I also don't want to lose money on this package. So how do I do that? And I came up with a solution. I pitched the solution. It actually, I came to find out that, that the actual individuals were not qualified um, overall. Um, because when I actually gave them a really, like, like I was doing a stupid deal. And I was a little like, eh, I don't know if I should do it. But I did it because I was like, okay, look, I want to help you. And then I found out, okay, they're just not qualified, which is fine. That's the other thing. I use price to qualify people, right? That may sound a little funny, but, you know, you could use that in the marketing. That's a creative strategy, you know? Oh, our packages start at $6,000 for 90 days. I listen to what somebody's reaction is to that. They go, or they say, oh, that's not bad. Or they say, oh, I like that. I'm like, good, we hit the vein. Or you go month to month with us, it's $3,500 a month, okay? You go six months with us, going to cost you $10,500 as opposed to going month to month over six months. And you spend, what is that? 15, 16, close to 17,000 to $20,000. See, so I'm playing, I'm always, that's creative. And then you can bring that dynamic creativity to, to your actual marketing and advertising. Yeah. Well, we start at this price and somebody says, ah, it's too expensive. Okay, good. We got a $29 product. There it is right there. You know, oh, well, I, I want something a little bit more. Oh, okay, good. Well, we got a, we got a $1,500 product. Okay, all right, all right, all right. We got a $100 product. Okay, that's good. So, so like, it's just, you're tapping. That's again, that's, that's what I was saying before. Okay, I'm just trying to crumble the, the resistance that, a, that an individual has to receiving communication about a product or service. You know, we talked about the building. We're trying to crumble the building. You know, Mark's trying to crumble the building over there so that he can, he can expose, you know, Watergate and all this stuff. I was talking about the movie before, if you didn't jump into that. It's the same thing with, with advertising and sales is that people have that. And you got to crack that code. You got to crack that building around them, that shell, so that you can actually reach the person and talk to the person in front of you. Because everybody's got this defensive lineup, right? But all I'm talking about is tap enough times creatively, the way that we're discussing, penetrate through that. And all of a sudden, the, 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 you know, they're your best friend. The guys who have had the worst experiences in advertising are my favorite clients to have. Because if I can win, if I win them over, they are nurtured and they are taken care of. You know, it's a good experience. It's exactly what it is, you know. 
And here's, I'll give you another example of that. Like I'm always thinking about that angle. Okay. Creatively. I'm like, yeah, how do we get that deal done? How do we do this now? How do we do this? Right. There's another deal that we were working on. There was a person who was running as like the via to this other company. I was brought in on the deal to, to help with um, content creation and website design. And then there's another gentleman in there who was brought into it as well. So we didn't have direct communication with the actual client. We were kind of like the outside vendors that this one guy was presenting. And I knew, I was like, I don't think this deal is going to go because I, I can't, I don't have the pulse on the individual, right? From a, both from a marketing perspective and from a sales perspective, I, I'm not in there. I don't, I don't know what's going on. So I'm talking to the main guy, and they're like, well, we need to go to another way. And I asked why, and there was no answer. And that really made me upset. See, that's a bad sales cycle. That's a bad marketer. Okay. You need to know why somebody says yes. And then you also need to know why somebody would say no. And then you also need to know, okay, good. How do I creatively talk about that in my own ads, in my own content, in my own distribution? There's the balance. There's the balance. It's not one way me talk, me, 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 me. It's me talking about what I've heard you say. That's really the trick. I am talking about what I heard you already tell me, right? And, and this is interesting. There's no, it's not even a trick. It's not manipulation. If you say, you know, the sky is blue. I say, yes, the sky is blue and we can do this because it's blue. Automatically right there. It's like, oh, I can do that. So how, so how do you translate that into, into ads, into content ads and marketing? And that's what I'm talking about here. That's that creative thing. I've heard what everybody has said. All I need to do is repeat what they said to them that I can handle that. That's really the quintessence of advertising and marketing. How can you creatively repeat from an acknowledgement standpoint, what somebody has said that they had a serious problem with that you can solve and they go, oh, he gets me. See, that's the creative effect. That's sales, okay? That's all sales really is. I wish I knew that at the beginning. I thought it was memorize the closes, memorize the script. No, it's not that. It's simply the ability for you to literally, literally listen to what somebody's saying repeat back what they said to them, their problem, word for word for word for word. If you ever sit on a phone call with me and someone's sitting there and they're going down the line and you know they're telling me all the situations, problems, and issues, I'll repeat every single one of those situations, problems, and issues back in the sales call to actually get that deal done. Then what do I do? I go to social media and I make a video about it and then I market and distribute that piece of content that does the exact same thing. He's not the only one that has that problem. So the balance between creativity and marketing is creatively listen so that you can exchange, so that you can distribute and get that out so that people can listen. And that's what we're talking about here. How you do it is entirely up to you. You wanna make videos, great. You wanna make graphics, awesome. You wanna make selfies, Instagram stories, Facebook stories, TikTok, Snapchat, whatever. I don't care. All I care about is that you walk through that process and you get that repetition and that tapping in because that's where you see the level of success that we are talking about and what we're describing here. Because anything else that's steering you in another direction in another way that doesn't quite make sense, it isn't worth your time. And it's not worth the potential prospects time on these social platforms, okay? These social platforms are just the vehicles to get your creativity out, that's it, right? But if you can understand what I talked to you about today, I guarantee you'll see a greater increase in conversion on your ads. You'll see a greater engagement rate from your content that you put out there because you're actively doing what we're talking about. You're coalescing the three different angles that have to be in there at all times. The balance is the balance between sales, creativity, and marketing. Sales, creativity, and marketing. It's just a cyclical thing that just keeps going on and on and on. All right? So I'll open it up to questions right now. That's, that's pretty much everything that I wanted to cover today. I think that's pretty good for 50 minutes of rocking and rolling and dicing and jiving. And, under, and understand this, like, this is not complicated. This is not hard. I don't want, it, it's, it's just simple, right? What is the lowest of low? And then what's the highest of high? And how do I graduate somebody all the way up to that level? How do I get them there? That's, that's it. There is nothing else that needs to take place. You don't need to rent your Lambos. You don't need a jet. You don't need girls. You don't need guys or whatever. You don't need models. You just need to look at it from that strategic standpoint. What is the simplest form? What is the advanced form? At the bottom of my funnel, I start with that simple form. I graduate up slowly, creatively, strategically, sales from a sales viewpoint, 
I listen to what people tell me on the phones and then I graduate up from there and you're covered and you have the game. And that's what we're talking about. All right. So I hope this gives some clarity on the balance between creativity and marketing. It gives you some insights. Like I've given you personal experiences that I have on a day to day and what I do on a day to day. And so hopefully that'll help you out. So I'll leave it open to questions for just a second. You can pop it in chat. You can put it in Q and a, um, and I'll just leave it there for a second. And if you don't, if you don't have any questions, then we'll just end off and uh, we'll come back next Wednesday for some more goody goodies from there. You're welcome, Daniel. My pleasure. All right. Awesome. Nobody has any questions. Y'all have a great night. Thank you for tuning in. I'll see you next week.